Yo, welcome back to the channel, and with me yet again is teammate Ryan. Good to have you back, buddy. Good to be back. Sand City Criterion. Will you guys just look at that little white map in the bottom right-hand corner? Well, there are 39 corners for each lap. Actually, not that many, but there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 corners on this course. Pretty nuts. And Ryan, you must have been stoked. Yeah, this is a fun course. Um, really, really technical. The location is super cool. Uh, yeah, I was I was excited for this one, and the day before I headed out to Chicago to race with you at Intelligentsia. That's right. I was so bummed I wasn't able to make it. I really do want to, want to participate in this course, and maybe next year. I think this is the second year they've had it. I want to come out because I too like to corner in Criterium's short courses, guys. This is like a kilometer long, maybe a little bit longer, and there are there are what do we say eleven corners. So you're on the edges of your tires most of the time, and the reason why Ryan really likes this is because. You have a mountain bike background. You are not scared of taking corners at high speed, and that's gonna, that's gonna give you a leg up. Pardon the pun. It's gonna give you a leg up in this bike race. Um, but the competition is pretty fierce. Should we talk about that? Actually, wait a second. Before we talk about competition, let's talk about the sponsor of this video, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is an online platform that is designed to match you with a licensed therapist based on your specific location and your specific preferences. And look, starting therapy can be hard. BetterHelp makes it easy to find helpful, unbiased advice because they have a network of over 30,000 therapists that you can schedule over the phone, over a video chat, whatever is most comfortable for you. I mean, we spend hours and hours training ourselves physically on the bike. Why don't we do the same for our mental health? I don't understand. I have personally benefited from therapy. And I think it's about time we remove the stigma that surrounds this topic. So you can join the over 4 million people who have already signed up at BetterHelp. It's professional, it's affordable, it's convenient, and best of all, it's 10% off your first month if you use code NORCALCYCLING at checkout. That is one word, NORCALCYCLING. I'll leave a link in the description. It'll support the channel. So thanks, BetterHelp. Now back to the video. The promoter does something pretty unique, right? There are heats. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, because it's such a technical course, um, you can't get too big of a field uh, on this. So because of the popularity of uh, the event, um, they decided to run heat. So there was a morning race, basically a qualifying race. There were two of them. They took the top half of uh, the results from those two races uh, to grid this, the, uh, the final for the day. So it's like what they're doing with NCL, but light. <laughs> it's like there's gridding, there's qualifiers. It's like a different... They're trying to kind of put a spin on crit racing. I think it's great what they're doing, but we're picking up action here in the finals, right? This, is, this isn't this is a qualifier. This is, hey, first person across the finish line is the winner. So um, so that puts you amongst all of the people who qualified and who are doing well, and that also means this is your second race of the day. Did that have any impact on you? Like, how hard did you have to go in your qualifier? Uh, in my qualifier, we went 1-2 with uh, Tim. We had half the team in the second qualifier that I was in. Um, so tried not to gas it too hard and, and save some top end for, for this race, but also didn't want to get caught out um, or get caught up in, you know, the scrum or crash or, uh, you know, risk risks and misfortune. So tried to stay out of trouble. But le legs are feeling pretty good for this finals? Yeah, this was, uh, I think it was a 50-minute race. So uh, plenty in the tank for a, a race of that length. Beautiful, beautiful. And now let's talk about competition because it was, like I said, it was pretty fierce. Can you tell us who was in this race? Who are you, who guys were looking out for? Yeah, we've been talking about him a lot on the channel recently. Uh, Tobin Ortenblad from uh, Santa Cruz Pro Cyclocross Racer was here, and you know this this course race is a little like a cyclocross course, so um, we're watching out for him along with um, Miles Hubbard and Max Rye from Project Seventy Four. Uh, who had gone well at this course last year, and um, Miles had just been crushing it. So those were the major threats, um, and then there were a lot of strong riders uh, from, I think there was Velo Kings, there was Tayroon, uh, Alta Velo, you could probably name a handful of others too. And then the local team, uh, the Monterey Bay racing team, uh, had some strong riders in here as well. Right, and then all of the teammates on Team Mike Spikes made it, so there were four of you, I believe. Was it uh, Jackson, Gavin, Roman, and you? That's right. And your role, I imagine, now correct me if I'm wrong, is the finisher. Like, you were going to be the last guy. This course suits you. You have a, an amazing pop at the end of a race, especially a hard race like this. Did that sound about right? That was it. The teammates were going to chase things back and try to keep it together and then line it up for uh, a sprint for me for the last lap. Let's see how it shakes out. And as the protected sprinter, here we are about halfway through this race or so. 
you have the luxury of your teammates. When they send it like this, hey, no reason to chase. Just let them go, right? Yeah, watching Tim go off the front to chase down that move uh, is a, it's a great, great thing to see. Especially Tim. He's, he is a, such a, a, a horse, man. He can just get on it, and then look, all of a sudden he's all the way up there, and, and you have this luxury of, like, you're on the front, and you're not, you're not chasing teammates. You're just watching him right away. And then when you see one of those major competition uh, competitors that we identified, there's Tobin coming around you, along with, um, is that, that's Max, right? No, no, sorry, that's Miles. Um, once you see some major competition getting away, that's when you decide you have that luxury, like, okay, these are, these are the guys I'll follow. And, and that's like, that's just, um, you know, heads up. Let the teammate go. If some ones and twos want to chase, let them until you see, like, one of the, the major hitters come around, and then you can jump in the draft. Yeah, that's right. And wait until that acceleration has happened so that you're not feeling, um, you know, that that sharpness from the front of the accelerating pack. You slowly get up to speed behind them. Right. And but this is but that's an acceleration you have to make because, you know, Tobin sees the danger up the road. A lot of the major teams are represented. Miles is the same. And you can't let these two guys get away because if they make it up uh, to your teammate, then it's it might, it might be a problem. Right. Like you have to follow this one have to follow it and get the toe up to the front group from them doing a little more work. So this is this is a good situation. Yeah, for sure. I mean, any time that your, your competition's out in the wind chasing a teammate and you're in their draft, like that's a win for a number of reasons. So that was a that was an important moment in the race, even though we still have 18 kilometers to go. Let's fast forward a bit. And now we're inside of 10 kilometers to go. And uh, God, I'm having deja vu here. You know, I <laughs> I see an attack going off the front. I see a teammate, and I see you. I even see your shadow kind of looking back and, and going like, okay, not that one, not that one. Okay, this one. <laughs> Can't let Tobin go, right? You identified him early on as like, he, guys, he's a national level pro cyclocross racer, and this course, in your words, Ryan, races like a cyclocross race. So, um, yeah, good looking out. Got to follow that one. And another just, like, again, deja vu. This is another situation where... You have a teammate up the road, competition's chasing, looking pretty good here inside of 10 kilometers to go. Were you feeling confident at this point? Yeah, I'd, I'd seen the teammates chase down a bunch of moves and felt like we had the race well well under control um, and things were going to according, according to plan at this point. And that brings us into uh, inside of six kilometers to go. So it must be like si five or six laps to go. Probably coming into five to go is my guess. And the, the boys in purple are starting to organize on the front um, God, shout out to the team, huh? Like, like, chasing stuff back all day, attacking themselves. You're able to sit back and chill, and still able to uh, to organize here on, on the front, you know, and make sure to keep it fast at the end. But um, but not before Miles kind of sends it here, and you decide, you know, you got some energy left over. You've been um, you've been sitting in, enjoying the draft, and and not letting Miles get away, huh? Yeah, I was in a good spot to cover that one, and the team was kind of boxed over to the right, so I figured it was easier just to jump on that than um, let him go away. I mean, he's a dangerous rider with 5K to go, so I figured I'd just jump on it. Yeah, you know, one thing I noticed um, is you were behind Miles a lot in this race, um, and for good reason. Like, like Miles is, is incredibly strong. Now, you guys have battled a couple of times. I think you got one on him, he got one on you, and um, he was out there with a teammate as well. This is also a, a really good course for him. He's not like a this pure field sprinter, but he's um, really strong at the end of a really hard day. A, a lot like you. I mean, you guys, I put, um, whoa, speaking of miles, <laughs> what was that? tell me what happened right there. Uh, that came out of the blue. He was, he was very apologetic, but man, I almost went down after he caught my bar with his arms. Yeah, they're saying sorry. But yeah, yeah, he's saying sorry. Wasn't expecting that. Yeah, I wasn't either. Oh my god, guys! This happened. This race happened a couple months ago. Um, full transparency. I, like I haven't reviewed this footage. My bet. My best commentary usually comes by surprise, and I don't know if you remembered that happening here inside of five kilometers to go. Only now that we're watching it back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I remember getting pretty freaked out. <laughs> yeah, he. Um, and the thing with Miles is, is like not a. I mean, I can't imagine any situation where he would do anything dangerous. So he didn't even have to do the wave. Like we, we all ride together. I know. Um, that was just a wrong, wrong place, wrong time. And uh, yeah, good, good save. I mean, it looks like you guys made serious contact right through there. But now yeah, but we're, we're rolling again. Yeah, yeah. Now we're kind of picking back up where where we left off here, which is um, which is purple getting towards the front. And look, look who else is up there. We have Tobin. We mentioned him already. We have Max, which is Miles' teammate there, Project Seventy Four in the white top, black shorts. And this is um, God. This is like kind of early for for only uh, three teammates. Right? Or is this, uh, was this according to plan? Did you guys talk about when you wanted to hit the front? Like, tell me what's going on. 
we didn't have a specific uh, distance or time to take up the front. So I think it was kind of when it when it felt like the right time and um, seemed like uh, the team had had things well in hand. And I'm going to follow Gavin, uh, you know, coming in 4K to go. Yeah. And there you go. You made your move on the right there to get in front of Tobin. I mean, it wasn't it didn't seem like a huge rush the way I handled those situations. I remember back to um, Cal, the Cal Aggie crit where we had Iman in our train and um, and I had to get around Iman. But we were also in the same situation where it was like four kilometers to go. And it's like not a huge rush. If this were like last lap, obviously, like you're at, you have a, a little bit more motivation to get in front of a rider that's infiltrated your train. But um, but you found a good opportunity there to, to make a pass, get on your train without spending any energy um, through that that little wiggle there on the back side of the course. And now it's the four of you. But I'm thinking at this point, like, yeah, the boys are strong, but holy smokes. I mean, they've been doing a lot of work up to this point. Um, close to four kilometers when you guys hit the front. That's that's a lot for only four riders. This is not the full squad, right, um, of, of, you know, eight team uh, teammates like we had at Giro de San Francisco, like we had at Oakland. So it's a little bit different here of a situation. But the, the nature of the course also lends itself to taking the front sooner. Um, is that right? Yeah, I'd agree with that. And then the previous year, I'd won it from the top of the hill here. So I was comfortable with a little a little longer move at the end um, to get to the finish. So we weren't counting on a lead out all the way to, you know, 100 or 150 meters. Dude, I totally didn't even mention that you are defending this race. I'm a bad host, guys. <laughs> Ryan is the is the defending. In fact, last year was the was the first year they had this race, right? So so you are yep. you are um, the the king. You are you are the king of the Sand City Crit, and you're here to defend. And um, I should have mentioned that right off the top. So yeah, this was um, this could be a big event. I've talked to the promoter about this race. He's very ambitious. I want to support it. I think this course is great. I think it draws a lot of um, really strong uh, talent. The fields were big, uh, and it's just a, a, a great course in a great part of the state. And I hope it, I hope that it becomes the thing that the promoter wants it to become. So um, it'd be awesome if it if it did, right? And, and you're just one of those guys, like the OG champion of Sand City. That uh, two kilometers to go, not even much rotating. I think the front, the first two guys are rotating. Now, have, did you guys talk about this? Because Gavin is also a powerful sprinter. You guys have seen him in my, our recent videos. He's done some of the uh, the final efforts there in the lead out. Was he like? Did you guys talk about the order? Because it seems like he's saving a bit of his legs too for maybe the last lap. Yeah, we we planned for Gavin to be the last rider. I mean, he is a climber that can can crit and sprint like no other. Um, and he'd been going really well, and and we've been riding really well all together all season. So um, he was saving his energy for the last lap, and now at this point, with just under two to go, it's. It's up to Tim and Roman on the front to keep things together. Um, and that's, I think, is that Roman pulling off? Um, I think, uh, hard, to, hard to tell right now, but let's talk about Max because, you know, earlier we talked about, ah, it's okay if somebody infiltrates the train with four kilometers to go, but with 1,500 meters, not so much. And it looks like, yeah, you're going to fight a bit harder. You don't have to use much power. You just positioned yourself so well through that corner just to get right back on your teammate's wheel because at this point, the one thing that could really sour this finish is if, like, Gavin goes and he leads out the competition, right? So you, you have to stay glued to your lead-out wheel. And that's why you see, um, I think that's Roman on the front. Now, Roman's looking back to make sure Gavin's still on. Gavin's looking back to make sure, make sure you're still on because this is crunch time. Now, we're going to hit one lap to go, which, yeah, I said it's uh, about, about one kilometer laps, and I think, um, I think that's just about right, maybe just a hair over one kilometer because, guys, notice that last corner is only, like, 100 meters from the finish. Um, so keep that in mind. And now we're coming through. God, Roman's so strong. He's the, the dude's so consistent. Just like all year long, he's able to do this. Um, be one of these key players in the finish. But I want you to talk us through the last lap here, Ryan. What's going on? Yeah, so Ryan, Roman's giving his final pull here. He's got us up to speed, and he's taking us into the bottom of this hill here. And Gavin and I had talked about it. Gavin was going to launch pretty hard going up this hill. So the, there's always a question if, if I'm going to be able to hang on to Gavin's wheel when we're going up a hill. Uh, so I managed to do that, and from this point, it's just go, 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 go. We're kind of headed into the wind, uh, so I really need to get back into the draft as much as possible, and then just pick a good spot to come around him. Um, so I've got a little, a little rush room right now, just a little bit of a gap to come through this corner with more speed. And I'm thinking about going into this next left hander coming up. Um, 
And I'm telling him inside, but he still apex is a little tight. So we're, yeah, we're elbow to elbow through that. And then from here, I just need to step on it and get to the finish line. Yeah, you always want to go a bit earlier. And people might criticize you for not hanging on your leadout's wheel there. But when you guys, you guys, when you're cornering just one after another, the draft is not as important as like those longer straightaways. And like you said, that little bit of breathing room. First, the last corner, we always talk about it. And man, with room to spare, taking it down. Amazing result. Another big W. Good job, Ryan. Yeah, that was a fun one. And huge shout out to Gavin and the team uh, for that effort. That was amazing. Pretty, pretty incredible. And look who's second. Tobin, the big threat. And uh, yeah, another W, man. Undefeated at Sand City. Um, will we look back in 2024 for the, the triple, the hat trick? What do you think, Ryan? I'm going to do everything I can, but we'll see who comes out. It's drawing bigger and bigger fields. So we'll, we'll have to see. Well, thanks for coming on as always. It was great having you guys. Um, if you like this type of content, um, drop a comment down below. Give it a thumbs up. Do the subscribe, all the YouTube stuff. And uh, Ryan, we'll catch you in the next one, buddy. Later.